Welcome to the Boom Tequila Podcast. I'm Jody, And I'm Erin. And today we are talking about something that a lot of people struggle with, and that is people pleasing. So, hi, my name is Erin, and I am a recovering people pleaser. <laughs> I'm so much better now, but it is a process, and I struggle here and there definitely still on the regular. So what is people pleasing? I feel like most people have a general idea of what it is, but a people pleaser is typically someone who everyone considers helpful and kind. When you need help with a project or someone to help study for an exam, they're more than willing to step up. According to an article in scienceofpeople.com and Google Quick Answers, a people pleaser is someone who tries hard to make others happy. They often go out of their way to please someone, even if it means taking their own valuable time or resources away from them. So a lot of putting others before yourself, but maybe not in the healthiest ways. And then a question that was commonly asked on Google is, is people pleasing and codependency the same? So people pleasers and codependents have quite a bit in common, but they're not the same. Codependents are people pleasers, but not all people pleasers are codependent. Yeah. (laughs) Codependency is a dysfunctional relationship pattern that goes beyond a tremendous desire to help others. It's called codependency because both people in the relationship are emotionally enmeshed or um, just like overly involved in a really unhealthy way. People who identify as codependent usually play the role of rescuer in a relationship with someone who is impaired, addicted, or ill in some sort of way. So People pleasing is like going out of your way, putting people before yourself. Codependency is more that just like having to have someone, lack of independence. So like codependency is what that makes me think of is basically doing whatever you can to make that person happy so they stay with you or stay around you. Like, Mm -hmm. is that kind of, okay. I I think that's a really good example of how a codependent person would people please also. It's like they're, that's where like the tie-in comes because like if you're, if you're codependent, you're going to be probably like really, really a people pleaser to that person that you're codependent with or, or whatever. Um, Makes sense. But just being a people pleaser doesn't mean you're also going to have that codependency element. Okay. So are you a people pleaser? Well, (laughs) you might be a people pleaser (laughs) if, all right. So you might be a people pleaser if you have a hard time saying no. That's a big one. (laughs) Do you think I have a hard time saying no? A thousand percent. <laughs> I, <think so> too. <laughs> I think you are a lot better than you used to be. I feel like you, you used to just, you're definitely like the people, pe- the people pleaser. <laughs> you were definitely a people pleaser, but you're a lot better now. Yeah. 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 There are still times where I will feel like I don't know how to say no. So I just am like, sure. When I don't really want to, but for the most part, I feel like I'm pretty pretty good at figuring out ways to set boundaries or say, exactly. I don't know. That, that was what I was thinking in my mind. Like you're so, you're much better with your boundaries now. Like you'll say yes, if it, even if it like is slightly inconvenient, but you have like your limits, I feel yeah. like. Which the funny thing, and this could be a whole nother episode is I feel like as a woman, when you do that and you set healthy boundaries, sometimes it can cause people to think that you're aggressive or a bitch or whatever when really it's like no I went to a, I went I went through years of therapy to learn how to be healthy and assertive guys <laughs> I'm actually right? a nice person I just but it's it's a healthy thing to be assertive and to have healthy conflict but exactly it's as women we're brought up I think to be people pleasers honestly which honestly yeah, yeah I could do a whole episode on that but and what's yeah. that saying where it's like if people people that don't respect your boundaries when they, when they draw, go to the line of where they don't respect your boundaries, that's where their respect for you ends. Is that, is that how it goes? Yeah. But that's assuming you tell them what your boundaries are. That's true. That's true. Respect what they don't know. Yep. That's a big, big thing too. People aren't mind readers. It'd be nice. Well, no, it wouldn't. (laughs) No, maybe not. Not really. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Next. You tend to not have an opinion about things and prefer to let others choose. Oh, I used to do this so bad. I remember especially, and this is one where it's weird because while I'm so good with like boundaries and my professional life and my personal life for the most part, um, the one 
area that I feel like I sometimes is still harder for me, not that I don't do it, but it's still like harder is when it comes to relationships with men, basically. (laughs) But I feel like for some reason it's harder. And I remember early on when I was younger dating, even that stupid question of like, where do you want to eat? And you kind of go like, oh, I don't know. Where do you want to eat? I don't care wherever. Like I did that so hard that it was probably obnoxious. (laughs) Well, I'm not that I, bad anymore. <laughs> yeah. I think I do this with people I don't know as well, just because I don't want to pick something that they don't like, or, you know, it's, it's kind of a way that I feel like trying to get to know them by like you choose. So I know what you like or what you're interested in. Yeah. yeah. I think but. it depends too on who you're with. Like for me, if I'm with someone that I think is kind of picky, I will try to push them to come up with the decision. If I'm with someone that I know is going to say, mm, not that, not that. Like once we can start to get into that, it's like, then you pick. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. And so if I think the person is pickier or they're going to have an opinion, I'll usually be like, oh, well, what do you want? And try to read that first. And then, yeah. 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 All right. Another sign is that you apologize frequently for little things. Wait, so isn't that just a Midwest thing? <laughs> Maybe Midwest are people pleasers more. Yeah, uh, I think so. <laughs> I, I do this. I think I do this a lot. I and I've so caught much. myself weirdly doing it. This is something that I maybe I've always done, but I weirdly feel like this one I do more now than I used to. <laughs> well, I'm better in a lot of the other areas. I'll say something or repeat myself or um, and maybe it's just a little bit of anxiety after 2020. We're all a little like anxious. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's almost rooted in that. But I find myself kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Or like, am I over explaining? I'm so sorry. <laughs> like yeah. just kind of apologizing for, and then it makes it worse because it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just over explained that. I was just trying to, oh, I'm doing it again. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. I apologize so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do that too. I feel like I've always done it and it's just, it's one of those things that I feel like you do it so much that you don't even consciously know that you're saying it anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One thing I've been working on doing over the last, well, forever, but it's a process is in emails and work when you're being professional and stuff is writing, not apologizing or using that overly feminine language in emails. And sometimes it's hard, but there will be so many times that I go back and I delete it because I'm like, clarity is more important than, and if you say like, oh, I don't know, or just a thought, but you know, I'm so sorry, you know, sorry to have an idea, but like, (laughs) we do that though. We'll be like, oh, sorry to interject. Don't be sorry for saying something. If you have a thought that's valid and valuable contribution. Exactly. So I feel like those are things that I'm working on like doing them in hopes yeah. that my brain will follow up. <laughs> right. Yeah. You over offer things, even if you aren't really comfortable with it, like helping someone pay their rent because you know money is tight for them right now and feel bad, even if you don't really have the extra or giving up your only day off to do something you don't really want to do. Isn't that funny? We were just talking about that mm-hmm. like five <laughs> seconds ago about how I was like, oh, I'm going to take this evening off. And I did hair all evening. <laughs> yep. Yep. I have, I feel like I have weaknesses with certain people that Mm -hmm. I do this with. And I think Jody, I've talked to you about one of them in particular that I feel like there's this one person that just kind of like reminds me of my little sister in a weird way. And (laughs) I just, I don't know. It's like, I have a soft spot. (laughs) So I just (laughs) can't help myself, but I don't know. Maybe that's different. I don't know. But there are certainly like certain people that I feel like I do that with, and I don't know why. I kind of feel like there's a fine line with that, especially with you. Like, I, I, I don't think that with this person in particular that you're doing things to people, please. I think you just see where you can help someone. So you just do, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's true. And that's one thing I think being a former people pleaser, sometimes it's hard for me to decipher like, wait, am I being a people pleaser or am I just like, being really caring because I'm both. And so it's yeah. like, I want to make sure I'm not being a people pleaser in my decisions, but I also want to make sure that I'm not just like being an yeah. asshole either. You know? <laughs> right. All right. And then another sign that you might be a people pleaser is uh, someone picks a restaurant or activity you kind of hate, but you say, yeah, that sounds good. Or mm, that's fine with me. <laughs> used to do this but I'm really big with food and stuff so I'll usually say like 
they didn't really have anything I like. Do you guys have any other suggestions? And if nobody does, like, I'm going to, I'll go there. Like, it's fine. I'm not going to, you know, but yeah. 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 I feel like I did used to be a lot more. I I, I feel like you've done this, at least not with me recently, but yeah. Yeah. But I also spend my time with people that know me well enough that they know like what kind of stuff I like to eat Mm. and what I like to do. So I guess I can't, we can't really stay with this. I don't know. Yeah. That's definitely one though. That's like beyond, oh, you pick to like, you yeah. not only are you like you pick, but then they pick somewhere you hate and you're just like, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Like, I feel like that's you though. I feel like you would do that. You'd be like, yeah, maybe kind of easy go. It's just more like your easy going side. I don't know, with you restaurants, know? I never care. Cause I'm not that picky and I don't have any yeah. food allergies. So I feel like I'm going to find something I like anywhere. And for a while I didn't really love Mexican food. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of my, my other best friend, like loved Mexican restaurants. And mm-hmm. I totally did this then she'd always pick like a Mexican restaurant and be like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so funny. Cause now I like it and whatever, but I was like, I'll find something I like. Like I can, you know what I mean? There's always something that yeah. you like, or if nothing else, I love margaritas. So <laughs> <I'm> always... <laughs> I don't know. Yes. All right. Um, another sign is you want to read this one? Sorry. Um, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, another one is you cancel plans with someone close to you who you think will understand because you said yes to helping someone else. Oh, this is a big one. I feel like a lot of like hardcore people pleasers. Yeah. I don't think do I do this. this. I don't know if I ever have. I can't think. Probably I have, but not any time that I can think of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I didn't highlight. Oh, I'm going to. Sorry. Never mind. All right. Another sign is you hate conflict and try to avoid it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do this. Yes, I do this. I hate conflict. Even thinking about like potential conflict makes me so anxious. Like I just don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. No, I definitely feel you on that. I used to be like this so bad. I remember this particular issue was something that I... <laughs> man, I'm, gonna, I'm like talking real, whatever, uh, like worked on in therapy, like, <laughs> because I did, I would do so much to avoid conflict. But the problem is when you avoid conflict in the moment, you foster resentments that eventually yes. that they come out one way or another. So it's either going to come out in these passive aggressive ways that are toxic, or it's going to come out in like the resentment builds until you have some kind of blow up. And then it's like, kind of messy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I did, I did all of that. (laughs) And I felt like, well, I'm trying to be nice because I'm avoiding conflict. And so, you know, I remember, oh, maybe it would be talking about certain topics with my mom and, you know, maybe we had very different recollections of things or something. I don't know, but an effort to just not have any conflict and not upset her idea about things, I would just kind of nod along and be like, okay. And the problem is when you do that, you're affirming what the other person is saying. So in their mind, they're like, well, they agree with me because we Mm -hmm. were just talking about it and they, you know, seemed to agree. And in your mind, you might be thinking, well, I didn't say I agreed. I just didn't comment because (laughs) I don't know. But I feel like it always, avoiding conflict in the moment always makes it worse later, but I still have moments where I do it. I try to pick and choose my battles, but there are still things that I just am like, it's either, I don't know, it's either not worth it or. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Also, you need to pick and choose your battles with who it's with, because some people, if you say something, even if you're not saying anything against them, but there's certain people, if you just have a different opinion, Mm -hmm. like. (laughs) Like politics. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that you were mouthing in the? Oh, <laughs> didn't want to say. My, no, cut Joey this. tries that to was... avoid political issues like politics because it's like an uncomfortable yeah. thing where everybody has such a strong opinion about. It. And I get it, I do. Um, and I was mouthing some... my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I though that's one to me that I feel like is okay to avoid because you're not gonna win anybody over. I don't feel like if you see a Facebook post and it's like very strong leaning one way or another and it doesn't align with what you agree with you don't have to be like I won't avoid this conflict on every <laughs> single one like, yeah common sense plays a role I feel like. exactly <laughs> like you said pick your battles for sure <laughs> yeah and I didn't highlight this one but I skipped it so if yeah. you want to read that next one I got it yeah 
All right, next is disagreeing with someone can make you uncomfortable and you feel it's better to just keep your opinion to yourself. I feel like you should have conversations with better people. If you like, who, who wants to have the same opinion as everyone? It's okay to have different opinions, you know? Yeah. yeah. I used to do this though. I used to kind of just go along with the opinions of other people, Yeah. but I'm fairly opinionated, I think, now. <laughs> and it, now I feel like it's more of a, okay, dial it back, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but that's good. Like if you have, if you feel really strongly about things that are really important, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's true. Yeah. All right. The next one, another sign that you might be a people pleaser is if you feel overwhelmed with the amount of things that you have to do. And this doesn't, this one, I feel like is not a hard, oh, if you're overwhelmed, you're a people pleaser, but <laughs> yeah. it can be a sign. It could be a sign that you have issues with boundaries. It could be a sign that like your life circumstances, whatever, but it, it is one that could also be a sign that you're a people pleaser. Like if you're still saying yes to stuff and you're already stressed out and overwhelmed, you're probably a people pleaser. Probably because, and also like you can have a lot of stuff to do. Like we, we both have like a lot going on every day, but I, I don't really feel overwhelmed. Like sometimes everybody gets overwhelmed sometimes, mm -hmm. but I think if you like what you're doing, that makes a huge difference in it. And also if you're just people pleasing, you're probably not really liking that. So, all right. Next is you tend to act similarly to the people you are with. This one's a hard one for me because I feel like, you know, as a Pisces, I kind of, <laughs> I do tend to get along with a ton of different type of people. And I feel like I can fit in with like very different groups from people who are like really like punk and grunge to really preppy and whatever. I'm talking like we're in high school. <laughs> Sorry. That's me being a people pleaser. Apologizing for how I'm talking. Um, <laughs> you can't win. But I, I do feel like I just have a lot of different, a very multifaceted personality. And so I can fit in with different groups and I do probably act different around each of them a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm never like a different person. No. So just like different sides of my personality maybe are more amplified around different people. That's, I that's, guess. I think normal. that's normal. Like, I think that's just. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think you might be right. Sorry, guys. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Um, all right. Another sign is that you don't tell someone when they hurt your feelings. This is a big one, I think, because it's like I used to do this. I used to not tell anybody. And now I always do. If someone hurts my feelings, I tell them every time. <laughs> See, this is still the one that I struggle with, like, really? because there's still and I, I'm better at it. But anything that's like standing, I'm so good, man. If I need to advocate for a friend, for a child, for anybody else, I can like lawyer up and <laughs> like Dude. advocate so hard. But when it's for myself, I my initial reaction is to be like, self-doubt like oh I'm overreacting or I'm dramatic or maybe it's not or oh I don't know or they didn't mean it like I talk myself out of saying something I still yeah I still struggle this is one I probably struggle with the most yeah all right always tell me if I hurt your feelings okay okay I, won't. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you I tell everybody like that hurt my feelings but you never hurt my feelings so I don't think I have to well, maybe a couple of times, but that's when I get jealous when you say other people are your best friend. No, <laughs> <laughs> we're back in high school. All right, <laughs> you feel responsible for how other people feel. No, this one I have recovered from fully. I think. Yeah. For the most part, I saw a TikTok the other day that I really liked, and it was about this girl. And she was talking about how she used to be super anxious all the time, and she said one day something just clicked. And she learned from that day forward to never take anything personally, unless someone comes up to her and like tells her exactly like how they're feeling, what she did or whatever to never just, if someone's acting a certain way, don't take it personally. If they're acting like off, then it's because of something going on in their life. Yeah. And I like that. I like that too. And it's yeah. so much easier said than done. Oh, absolutely. But <laughs> I definitely feel like now I'm in a place where I realize, I realize that my actions have an impact. And I think being aware of the impact you have on others is important, but I also don't feel responsible at the end of the day for how someone feels. Yeah. And I like that. Just don't take it personally, but yeah. All right. Another sign is you often tell little white lies to avoid saying no or let people down easy. This is another one of those, I think avoiding conflict or avoiding you're kind of trying to avoid the situation by 
I don't know. Like if somebody's like, hey, do you want to hang out tonight? And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds fun because you don't want to say no, but mm-hmm. then you don't really want to hang out and then you're just going to act like something came up. Like t- that, that's where I feel like it goes wrong. It's like, yeah, I don't know if any of y'all ever watched Veggie Tales. <laughs> and I don't know why I got a Southern accent all of a sudden, but... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they they had this um, episode about the rumor weed, like the, I don't know if it was the rumor weed or what it was, but there was like, somebody told a little white line, it grew into this like giant weed. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm apologizing again. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that was unnecessary. All right. <laughs> Next is you care a lot what other people think of you and it's important that people like you. I'm working on this. I think everybody cares what people think of them some. Yeah. But it's do you allow the opinion of other people to actually impact how you act and how you behave? I think that's where it crosses. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right. And then the other sign is you complain about situations that you know you will not address. I think everyone does this some. And there are times where it's like, I know it's not worth it to say anything, but I just need to vent to someone. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like I definitely do that from time to time. But at the end of the day, I try to, if something's really going to bother me, I feel like I have to address it or I have to somehow resolve it internally that it doesn't bother me. Like I, I don't like to just have stuff faster. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. It like makes it worse. It makes it a bigger deal than it begins with. If you just let it sit. Yeah. All right, so those are some of the signs that you might be a people pleaser. Uh, When it comes to why people people please, uh, there are a few reasons. Uh, For one, people pleasing is often rooted in deeper issues such as insecurity. According to Psychology Today, some people pleasers hope that saying yes to everything asked of them will help them to feel accepted and liked. Other people pleasers have a history of maltreatment and somewhere along the way, they decide that their best hope for better treatment or somewhere along the way, they decided that their best hope for better treatment was to please the people who mistreated them. Over time, for them, people pleasing became a way of life. It sounds like they have narcissists in their life. <laughs> if they're being treated bad and then they just aren't really nice and saying yes to them and then they're still being treated bad and it's just <laughs> better people. Many people pleasers confuse pleasing people with kindness. When discussing their reluctance to turn down someone's request for a favor, they say things like, I don't want to be selfish, or I just want to be a good person. Consequently, they allow others to take advantage of them. So how do we stop being people pleasers? I'll tell you. (laughs) (laughs) When someone asks you to do something that you really don't want to do or don't feel comfortable with, say you'll get back to them. Sometimes things are harder to say in person or on the phone. And I know for myself, I'm much better at communicating and writing sometimes and can later send a text after the pressure is off. Things like journaling, mindfulness, or working with a therapist to better connect and identify your own thoughts and feelings about things can be helpful. Knowing where you stand can make a huge difference when it comes to knowing what to say. I think that's a big one. Self-awareness. Yes. Practice saying no, even when it's hard. Just do it. Rip the Band-Aid off. Start small and you will gain courage as you go. And if you know there are situations that tend to repeat themselves, such as a friend always asking for a loan, you know they'll never pay back, or needing last-minute help when you have a thousand other things going on, think of some responses in advance. For instance, you could say something like, I would be comfortable loaning you more money after you reimburse me for helping you out last month, or to be honest, I really don't have any extra for loaning right now. You could also say, if they're asking you for favors, I'm really busy this week, but I could probably find an hour or so next week to get together. Basically, let them know what you are comfortable with. It's a way to positively set that boundaries that's not saying no, but letting them know what you can do or what you are comfortable with. Good. It's about how you word things. Yeah. Yeah. Embracing and reminding yourself that you have control over your actions and responses, and you do not have control over how others react or if they like you. If you're being kind and doing your best, that's the best you can do. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Another thing is you can become familiar with toxic behaviors so that you know how to identify them. Someone who is trying to push or coerce you into something after you have said no is a big one. For instance, if you've said you don't have the extra money, they might question your recent shopping trip or vacation or guilt you into helping them or promise that they will pay you back when there is a solid pattern of them not paying you back. Or if you've say promised your family a night in they might say things like oh come on you're such a party pooper or you're always with them or well maybe just for a little bit a few drinks isn't that big of a deal they won't miss you for a little while (laughs) but you know they're gonna like reel you in to like staying out later or whatever um and that's what you were saying earlier about respecting your boundaries like once you've said it when they're like oh come on come on come on Mm -hmm. Recognize that people pleasing can have a negative impact on your health and happiness. Saying yes might save you from feeling uncomfortable in the moment, but could foster resentment in the long run. Settling, setting healthy boundaries may give you some temporary anxiety, but will ultimately set you up for success. That's right. Yes. And I'd say the best, you know, for me, the best thing to do was to just do it when it was uncomfortable. And then eventually it starts to feel more comfortable and you start to like, your self-awareness and, and everything kind of increases together with it. All right. So now we're going to transition into Joe Jam. Jody, do you have any music this week that you want to have us check uh, out? Yes. Okay. My Joe Jam for this week, the first time I heard it was on, I think it was the CMT Music Awards. It's Kelsey Ballerini and I don't know if I'm saying it right, Lanny or Laney, L-A-N-Y. And the song is called I Quit Drinking. It's so pretty. I love this song. Awesome. And mine is, she like gives like a nice pretty one. And then I'm going to (laughs) like, mine is called Thought Shit. (laughs) I'm Megan the Stallion. I almost didn't say it just because of the name. And I was like, do I really want to say that on the podcast? But whatever. It's a bop, (laughs) y'all. Thought, thought, like T-H-O-T. Thought. Thought. Like, Like a thought. Like. Hands on my knees, shaking ass on my thought shit. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Nice. More where that came from. <laughs> it's a good, um, oh, what's the word for it's like lots of different things. Random. It's a real it, random. It's very eclectic. Eclectic yeah. selection for you to choose from. If you don't like yeah. mine, you're going to love hers. If, if you hate hers, you might like mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You might hate both of them. or love Both ends of the, of the spectrum right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. And now... We are going to transition into Dish Bish, and we're going to do a little quick, think quick on your toes. We're going to pull a card, and you say the first three things that come to mind. We've done this one before, but it's always super fun. We're playing five-second rule. All right, name three STDs. Which one's the clap? <laughs> Gonorrhea, chlamydia, and herp alert, herpes. Awesome. Name three bad but good things. Uh, ice cream. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, now it's going to be all food, pizza, and alcohol. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Name three words you say instead of the F word. Um, Fudge. I always say fudge the bucket. I don't know why. Can you just say like shit? No, I think it's supposed to be like like censored. Fudge. (laughs) Darn it. And (laughs) shit. (laughs) And um, (laughs) the only thing that comes to mind is um, and dang it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i should just let you say the f the the cuss words and roll with it it was supposed to be the first things you think of fudge yeah. firk and frick frick the frick <laughs> what the frick all right was that mine or yours wait okay yours name three uses for coconut oil uh hair skin and teeth like it's pulling like when you oh, push yeah. it around in your mouth it's kind of nasty All right. Name three people you never want to see naked. Can I be honest? Like I'd look at anybody, like anybody. (laughs) (laughs) You know, the first thing I thought of, and this is so like, I shouldn't say it. And I should be like, yeah, I'm so confident. Oh, the first thing I thought of was like myself. (laughs) No. (laughs) You want to look at everyone naked. There's not one person you wouldn't want to see naked. But I don't think there's anyone that I would be like, no, I'm good. Okay. My family, people in my yeah. family, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't look at them. Yeah. 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 But like anybody else, like, like I'm going to, I'll look. Shit. I'll look. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> name three reasons to take your shirt off. If you're hot 
if you're just pot, pot walking around um <laughs> if you're about to do it gosh. and if you're gonna take a shower <laughs> I don't know the first one I thought of was if you're hot like you just <laughs> it's getting hot in here so take off all your clothes all right name three things you should never leave unattended um your children your money and your keys yeah, those are really good. Name, I'm not going to do that one because you won't do it. What was it? Name three ways to hide a fart. Ew. It's <laughs> Gross. That's why I put it up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Name three uses for your tongue. Um, blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting it pierced and talking. I don't know why talking wasn't the first one I didn't think <laughs> of. Jeez. What are you thinking about? I don't know. All right, guys. It's been super fun. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Check us out on Instagram at Boom Tequila Podcast. You can join. We have a new group on Facebook. If you want to interact with us more personally, we do fun after parties, after we record, and some exciting things. You can connect with us on there. Our link is in the bio and our Instagram, or you can find it actually... Well, yeah, you can find it by just searching on Facebook as well. If you search for Boom Tequila Podcast, there's a group. And it's, it's pretty lit, y'all. Sorry. Man, I do apologize too much. I'm going to <laughs> check myself before I wreck myself. All right, guys. Ahala. It's been real. Peace out. Bye, sluts. See you next week.